<laughs> I need your business card. <laughs> so that's, that's great. So um, let's get started. We're going to have Data SF, folks up here from the city of San Francisco with Data SF Project, um, come in and share their information. We have to do a little switcheroo here with the computer, so give us just a moment. Um, hi everyone, my name is Joy Bonaguro and I work for City and County of San Francisco and we have been busy putting our heads down trying to get the city's data out there for you to use. And along the way we realized that you are a whole group of people that we were reaching out to and some of you may know about us, some of you may not. And so right now today we want to just show you what we can offer but then we want to sit here and learn about what your needs are to see how we can improve our services. And without further ado, I'm going to turn you over to Jason Lally, our Open Data Program Manager who is awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jay. Um, I'm Jason Lally, I'm the Open Data Program Manager, as we mentioned. Uh, I'm going to talk really quickly about, um, about what we offer at the City and County of San Francisco. Um, less about an app, more about infrastructure to power apps and power insights. Um, I'm gonna, I want to start first, though, with our mission. And our mission to it is to empower use of the city's data. And we take that mission very seriously. Um, it, it sort of we want to make sure that everything that we do is actually geared toward users, geared, geared toward personas, geared toward people who are actually using the data, rather than just putting data up on a website and hoping that they get they get used. So we have a lot of different users, and we have this theory that open data can actually uh, provide value to many of the many of those different users. Uh, earlier, I saw people raise their hands about um, who who in here in the room. There are a lot of nonprofits, which is great. And Joy just mentioned that we want to reach a lot of you. Um, there's also, how many of you are technologists? Do you consider yourself technologists? Okay, great. Um, and so we, there's sort of two personas, two types of users. Um, we have a bunch of them, but two that are in the room today is citizen hacker, citizen programmer, and then the sort of um, the, the, uh, the, the nonprofit, um, the community activist, the community advocate, right? And so I want to talk a little bit to that today and I'll talk about it, uh, really expose you to our flagship product, which is our the Open Data Portal. So this is a doorway into the city's data, right? So a place where you can go and get all sorts of data, find it, search for it, and also reach out to us. Um, so I'll walk you through real quick what that looks like. This is the portal. Uh, how many of you have seen this before? Okay. All right. So uh, this is the first time for a lot of folks. So. <clears throat> This is, our, this is our front door right now for the Open Data Portal. Um, and there are a couple of ways that you can access data, right? You can search. You can start by various categories. Uh, we have economy and community, city management and ethics, public safety, city infrastructure. And these categories were all developed through card sorting exercise and looking at who, you know, what, what categories do people actually assign you know, meaning to. But we also found that our departments find it really important to get to data really quick by the department. So a little bit further down, you can actually go by department. So we have all these different ways to enter, and you can also, at the top here, just get into data and just dig right in and browse. So I'm gonna just show you real quick, you know, what, what does it look like to enter into a category? So uh, one thing I just did right here uh, is, you, if you hover over any of these categories, it'll give you a little bit more context. I'm hovering over public safety, uh, which is a popular one. You go in and you end up on the catalog. So this is what you see first. So it's a bunch of lists of data sets. Um, I'm gonna give you a couple of quick tips. I'm gonna kind of walk you through this real quick. So one thing you can you can kind of you can filter this in a lot of different ways. You can filter by types. And this is this is lost on a lot of people, so I'm gonna just sort of highlight a couple things here. There are different resource types on our catalog. And the this is actually our uh, the iconography that's that's broken out, so you'll see this, and you can revisit this presentation later. One thing I want to draw your attention to is the, the really meaty stuff is right over there: tables, charts, maps, filtered views, data lenses. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on, on all these, but basically, tables probably are what you're really interested in if you want to get into data, you want to connect to it for an app. Um, but charts, maps, filtered views, data lenses will all lead you back to those tables. So you'll be, you'll be able to find data through those. I'll also point out external links are not as useful on the, 
on the portal because they don't have all the features that I'm going to show you. But if you're a, how many of you do mapping, ge work with geographic stuff? Okay. So if you're interested in maps, um, if you know what a shape file is, um, this is a you can you can search through our catalog and find a lot of data that's kind of sitting out there. We're working on actually making that more accessible over time. Uh, but for now, this is a good. That I just want to draw your attention that that's another place where you can find some really interesting data sets. Um, but you won't necessarily be able to leverage all the things I'm going to show you right now. So a couple other things. Returning to that, you can uh, all those categories that were on the front page. You can filter you, so you can jump real quick to another category if you're like, ah, this one's not. As, not I'm not finding what I need here. You can also sort. Um, sort by most relevant, most accessed, recently updated. I, I find as a quick tip, um, it, the search is not really awesome on the Open Data Portal. Um, it's getting better. Uh, we're working with our, our the, the folks who make this uh, uh, and, and host it for us to make that better. But um, what I find is, really, if you want to find things that are rec that are like fresh and recently updated, you can actually filter by recently updated. So you can actually see what's what's changed recently. Um, what's been what's just been added? You can actually look at newest. So if you're really kind of you're just trying to explore and understand what what data we're publishing, that's a good way to kind of get to get to know the data catalog a little bit. And of course, you can you can search. So I type in fire here, returns all the the various fire related data sets um, under the public safety category. So uh, moving on though, let's get into a data set. I've gone into uh, PD incidents, SFPD incidents, which is essentially our, our crime data. Uh, this is a very popular one. This is 1.7 million records. Um, and what you're, this is like, oh my, uh, wow. <laughs> There's a lot going on here, right? We don't expect you to actually use the data in, in this form. This is good to browse, to understand. Maybe you can, you can filter and you can do a couple things. But I'll show you in a little bit ways that you can get at the data and really, really dig into it. A um, couple things to notice, uh, to note. Up at the top, there's this, this toolbar at the right-hand corner. And um, you know, when you go home tonight and you're looking at this, pay attention to that. Um, I'm not going to go through all these. I'm going to just touch on a couple, a handful, uh, really the two most important ones. Um, but all of this you can find on the portal. You can, you can get uh, more information on. So one of the key ones, I'm sorry I'm standing away here, but you can filter. So filtering is a, some, is a nice sort of thing you can do, especially 1.7 million records. Maybe you just want to kind of explore and, and kind of see the shape of the data, kind of understand it a little bit better before you go and download it. Filtering is a good way to kind of kind of approach it. So um, there's a lot of different options you can add. You can filter by any of the columns. Um, and so you know, I'm adding a new column, and you can you can basically just up, update those. You can sort by date there. You can adjust those. But say you filter, you really want to access the data. The most important uh, button is export. And it's not, that's not really obvious, but export gives you access to all the various ways that you can get at the data. So if you are, how many of you are Excel junkies? We work in Excel a lot. OK, good. All right. So you probably are going to be interested in doing one of two things, downloading which you can do right here. You can download as Excel, CSV, and other formats. And how many of you have heard of OData? OK, a couple. If you haven't, and you love Excel, go and learn about OData, because we actually, you can connect to our data through that, through that method. And we'll actually get, it'll sync from the data portal. So every time we update, your, your Excel spreadsheet can update. And finally, for those of you who are developers, APIs. Application Programming Interface. We won't get into what that means. I'm happy to talk about it um, if, if you want to learn more. But for those of you who do understand that, <clears throat> um, this is a great way to access the data in a way that you can put it in your apps, you can pull it out, you can programmatically access it, and there's documentation. So every single data set that's published this way as a table has this documentation behind it so you can learn about how you can access it, what the fields mean, all that. Um, so really quickly, okay, so you've shown me a lot of stuff about data and accessing, it's, it's a little mind-numbing. Um, how do I make sense of all of this stuff? What are you doing to help us make sense of that? We, as I mentioned before, we, wanna, we don't want to just put data out there and, and, and hope for the best. We also want to provide context. Um, so we are doing a couple things around that. 
Uh, and we're going to be doing more, and we're happy to hear feedback, and we'd love to hear more about your challenges. But when Joy first joined the city, uh, one of the things that she was trying to uh, understand was, uh, you know, what can we do about affordable housing? At, or what is the city doing about affordable housing? And where could she go to get reliable data about affordable housing? And unfortunately, the, the answers were the problem. Um, they weren't sure, uh, not possible. And so we came up with a solution, the Housing Data Hub. And it's a single place, uh, provides a housing every description policies, supporting data and viz. And um, real quick, you can access it at housing.datasf.org. Uh, you can dig into policies. You can, we actually group them, so it's no longer by department. It's actually by policy. Um, what's that? Housing.datasf.org. And then you can dig into the data. And so one thing I want to I point out here is you can look at total eviction notices by year since 1997. It's a little outdated, but um, if you go to the site, it's, it'll be the freshest. Uh, and you can click on Get the Source Data Set and it's actually gonna link you right back to the data that's sitting on the portal. So we're trying to create these enduring sources of truth and unbroken data lineages. So you can actually trace all this stuff back to its source and, and trust it and build, build trust in the data. Um, one last thing I'll end, end on is you might go home and uh, forget things I said and get frustrated and we don't want you to feel frustrated. You know, we're here to help. Um, a couple things I wanna point out. There is a help button on the portal. <laughs> Go there, there's getting started, it covers a lot of the stuff I just went over. And you can also contact us. We this will go into our help desk and we will do our best to make sure that your, your questions are answered. And finally, if you want to learn more about our program, just broader stuff that I haven't gone over, you can go to our datasf.org, which really gives an oversight of what we're doing in our program and all the other tools and things that we've been developing. So thank you very much. Uh, Yes. Do you have links to um, successful demonstration of products using your data? Yes. Um, so on the portal right now, and we're actually we're doing uh, we're actually in the process of improving this. You can go to a button. There's a, a little option on the top called Showcase, where we showcase uh, different different application uses. And we actually joy last National Days of Hacking. We kind of came up with this concept of made with open data. So. Someday in the future, there will be a more robust platform for that. Um, if you go to datasf.org, we have a couple of like featured things right now on, that are kind of a placeholder, but um, you'll be seeing more and more of that. But we, can, we do accept submissions as well on the showcase, and we'll eventually transition those to this new platform. Yes? For the Health and Human Services button, um, can you yeah. marry that with 211? Should I be so? Um, two, one, so the question was, uh, the health services data, do we marry that with 211? So 211 data is maintained um, by, a third, uh, by the United Way. Um, and so it's not a city source. It's not something that we, we publish there. Um, we do publish uh, where available um, da data on resources. So different departments will publish data sets on resources where they have that. Um, we don't have as much of that right now, but, but that's, that's one way that we're We don't have 211 data, though. In the back? Do you have the capability to store data and encrypt part of the data for the public, but give special permissions to certain agencies to see what like your health information and stuff like that? So, yeah. So the answer is it, this on this platform, no. Um, so the, the platform is this supports primarily public access. However, uh, that is exactly a thing that we have been thinking about and talking about because we want to. We want to. We actually we just brought on um, a, a new staff member, uh, SF data, uh, SF coordinator, who's thinking about confidential data sharing, and we're thinking more broadly about how do we how do we enable that kind of access and how do we have the this field control. So the answer, the short answer is no, but we are definitely thinking about that. Um, if you had one action you would want people in this room to take after today, what would it be? One action. Um, Use our data and tell yeah. us what you think of it. Yeah, that's, I was going to say, use our data, tell us what you think. Oh, and the, so that contact us, you can do questions and suggestions, but also if you have feedback, just let us know. Um, we want to we hear, we won't know how to improve unless we hear from you. One more? Oh.
Right, <laughs> it's great to see everybody engaged. Who remembers the question that I asked you all to think about before your class assignment? It looks like a lot of you are doing it, right? You're thinking about how you can engage with their data, how you can plug into their